Okay, so here we are still counting the cost of discipleship. You know, and so this is the count the cost course, you know, and we've been taking a look at discipleship and counting down the cost. You know, we've been going through a cost, cost benefits analysis, if you would. And that's where we take the benefits and we put them on one side and we take the cost and we attribute them to another side. You know, so a cost um, benefit analysis is a weighing scale approach for decision making. So we put all the positive elements on one side and negative on the other side. And the one that's the heaviest win. Okay, so uh, we've been talking about the cost, cost of discipleship. And so this is cost number four. And cost number four is also found in Luke 14, 27. You know, um, it says, and whosoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. You know, and we talked about carrying the cross. We talked about um, denying oneself, you know. But today we're going to talk about the cost of following Yahushua. You know, because... There is a cost involved in following Yahushua, you know, even as the cost of um, discipleship, you know, cost cost to be a pupil or learner of Yahshua. And in, in order to learn, you have to follow him. And in order to follow him, there is a cost involved as well. And so we're going to take a look at that, at that notion. And we're going to jump right in with um, Luke 9, 57 through 62. Uh, Sister Alicia, can I have you read uh, Luke? 957 through 62, please. Sure. And it came to pass that as they went in, in the way, a certain man said unto him, Adonai, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Yahushua said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Adonai, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Yahushua said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of Elohim. And another also said, Adonai, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Yahushua said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow, and looking back is fit for the kingdom of Elohim. Hallelujah. So, Yahushua is our Savior. So, what did he teach that one must do to enter in? Um, oh, I'm sorry. I supposed to speak about that passage first. So, uh, here it is. Adonai saying, you know, um, we had this guy saying, Adonai, I will follow thee whithersoever you, um, you go. You know, and so, Yahshua tells him, the son of man have no not where to lay his head. And so you have to know and understand that if you follow Yahushua, you may not find you may find yourself not having a place to lay your head as well, you know. And um, you know, that's something to consider. You know, and we see that that another, you know, he told to follow him, but he said, you know, suffer me first to go and bury my father. And he, his response was, Let the dead bury the dead. But go thou and preach the kingdom of Elohim. And we see another one that wanted to follow, you know, and he said, well, let me first go and bid him farewell, um, which are at my home, at my house. You know, and Yahshua responds, saying, no man having put, put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom. You know, and the only way you can understand this you know, and why he's so adamant about, about these things is, you know, if you understand the word follow, which in the Greek is a koluteho, a um, meaning to be in the same way with, you know, and of course that way is the way of Yahuwah, the way of Elohim, you know. Now, the thing is, is, you know, they were already in the way with him, you know, these uh, couple guys that said, you know, Hey, I'm gonna follow you, but first let me do this, that, or the other. You know, well, in order to do this, that, or the other, you have to 
leave out of the way with, with Yahshua and go and do something else. Hence, he tells the guy, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom. You can't leave out the way and then, you know, and then try to make your way back, you know. Maybe you'll make it, maybe you won't, you know, but Yahushua is saying, you know, once you don't put your hand to the plow, you know, there's no looking back, you know, you got to keep your hands on the plow, you know, and, you know, he, so he uh, is kind of driving this, this point home. Now, as aforementioned, Yahushua is our savior. And so what did he teach that one must do to enter into life? For this is the way he went and the way we want to, we want to um want to follow him in, you know, because we want to enter into life and um as well. And this is very important because a lot of people who call themselves following Yahushua don't understand this. So I um Yah impressed it upon my heart to try to make it clear. And so this is what I'm going to try to do. So when we get to Matthew Yahu 19, 16 through 19, it says, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good things shall I do that I may um, have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is Elohim. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. And he saith, he saith unto him, Which? Yahushua said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now, take note that Yahushua didn't simply say keep Torah. It's very important that one understands this exchange, for if not, they could be led astray thinking that the commands mentioned are the most important ones, but that wouldn't be true. For Yahushua taught that the greatest command of all that was in Torah was to love that is Agape Elohim. You know, and this is um, found in Matthew 22, 37 and 38. It says, Yahushua said unto him, Thou shalt love the Adonai, thy Elohim, with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. So we see here that this is the first and great commandment. So if that be so, why wasn't it included in the list of commands needed to enter into life? Surely you can't enter into life without loving Elohim. Deuteronomy 32, 41 says, if I wet my glittering sword in my hand, take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to my enemies and will reward them that hate me. Now, the, the reason this vital command wasn't specifically mentioned by Yahushua is because it was meant to be included within his answer to the young rich man. Take note that Yahushua was responding to the young man's question concerning which commandments he needed to do. Now, if one doesn't understand the cultural piece involved with this question, they'll totally miss the truth um, being presented here. You see, in a Yahudu's mind, then as well as now, there are two parts to the law. There's two parts of Torah, i.e. the written commands of Elohim and the oral commands of men. Hence, Yahushua was simply discussing distinguishing which one he was um, speaking of by giving a few examples that pointed to the written commands of Elohim. But it's important to understand that he meant them as a whole. He didn't just mean those specific things. He meant all of the written Torah, all of the written commands of Elohim, you know, versus the uh, oral law or the oral commands of men. Now, just as a side note concerning Deuteronomy 32, 41, you do well to remember that in their culture, to hate meant to love less. So when he says, I will render vengeance to my enemies and will reward them that hate me, he's speaking of, you know, you don't have to literally hate him, but just love him less than something else. You know, and you become his enemy. Say lot. Now, it's evident that Yahushua kept Torah, i.e. the written commands of Elohim, but disregarded the oral commands of men, you know? So, you know, I want to make it explicitly clear that Yahushua did adhere to the written commands of Elohim, 
you know, even though he disregarded the oral commandments of men, you know, and those, what he was doing was separating those two parts of Torah, you know, and he was keeping the written commands of Elohim, but he was getting rid of the oral commands of men. So can I have my next reader? Uh, looks like it is Sister Donna. Could you read Mark 7, 1 through 8, please? Sure. Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain other scribes which came from Jerusalem. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say with unwashing hands, they found fault. Well, the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they, except they wash their hands off, eat not, holding to the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. And many other things there be, which they have received to hold as the washing of cups and pots, brazen vessels and of tables. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashing hands? And he answered and said unto them, Well hath Esaias prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men, for laying aside the commandment of Elohim, you hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such things, like things ye do. Hallelujah. Okay, so here it is. We see Yahushua speaking in, in this regard um, concerning the, um, the two parts of Torah. Uh, and so we, we see him here disregarding the oral commands of men, you know, calling them the traditions of the elders. And then he, he kind of reprimands them, you know, in verse seven saying, how be it in vain do they worship me, teaching the doctrines, uh, teaching for doc doctrines, the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of Elohim, ye hold the tradition of men. See, and it's important to understand that, you know, the Yahudim look at the law is having two parts, the written and the oral. But it's also imperative that you understand that they uphold the oral over the written. And see, this is what Yahushua is alluding to, you know, when he says, ye hold, um, let, for laying aside the commandment of Elohim, ye hold the tradition of men. So they uphold the traditions of men. They uphold the oral um, law over the written word of Elohim. You know, and it should be the other way around. They should be laying aside the commandments of men and up and upholding the um, commandments of Elohim. You know, so you know this is what he was what he was speaking to. Now, it's these traditions of the elders, this oral law, these commandments of men that Yahushua came to free us from. You know, and we see this spoken to in Colossians two nine through sixteen. So if I can get my next reader, like Sister Helen, um, could you read Colossians 2, 9 through 16? <clears throat> okay, yes. Can you, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of the principality and power, in whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins in the flesh of the circumcision of Messiah, buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith and operations of Elohim, who has raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your sins and the circumcisions of your flesh, has he quickened together with him, having for forgiven you all trespasses blotting out the handwriting of ordinance that was against us, which, as, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made show them openly, triumphing, triumphing over them, over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or 
or in drink in respect of holy day or the new moon or the Sabbath days. Hallelujah. So here it is, you know, um, we're being taught that Yahushua actually blotted out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us. Yahuwah Elohim did not give any commands that was against us. He never gave Israel any commands that was against them or contrary to them, you know, and where it says, then let no man um, therefore judge you and meet and drink it or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. And now in the Brick Kata Shah in uh, King, King James Version, it says the new moon, but this, this um, if you look it up, it literally means the new month, you know, and you know, they say that it's implying the new moon. Well, it literally says the new month. And if, that, if it was truly meant to apply the new moon, they probably would have just put new moon. But they didn't. They put new month. And so that's that's literally what it says. Now, I've heard many utilize this passage to justify not keeping um, uh, not keeping these things. Um, and these things, and saying these things, I mean not keeping uh, Torah at all, including the written commands of Elohim, you know, and so I've heard uh, many a minister say that, you don't, you know, due to this passage, you don't have to you, um, keep or even you shouldn't keep, you know, the written commands of Elohim, i.e. Um, Torah, you know, the written commands of Elohim, no, not the oral. Okay, so, you know, they don't make that distinguishment. They don't, they don't recognize that there's two parts to the law you know, because um, many are ignorant to that fact. Nevertheless, I want you to know and understand that this is not saying that in any stretch of the Im imagination. It's not telling you, you know, not to not to keep Sabbath or a holy day, you know, or a new month. You know, it's just saying, you know, let no man judge you in respect of these things. And the reason that it says that is because in the oral, the oral traditions, the oral law, they had a whole slew of, of uh, ordinances that was connected to these things, that was connected to the holy days and the new, the new months and the Sabbath days. You know, um, you, you, I'm sure you've heard of some of the ones with, uh, concerning the Sabbath, you know, like uh, you could only walk so far and you know, and um, you you couldn't you couldn't do this, that, or the other. You know, uh, outside of what Scripture says, you know, which causes a bunch of confusion. You know, but suffice it to say that this is not what's being said here. If you if you read it carefully, it's not telling you not to do these things. It's just saying let no man judge you in how you do. All right, so. And if we're going to truly follow Yahushua, wouldn't we also find ourselves disregarding com um, commands of men? And um, wouldn't we find ourselves winding up in the various places that he's been? You know, if we're truly following him, wouldn't we eventually come to be in the same places and doing the same things in which he did? If we follow him in everything that he that he's, he's said and do done, you know, so, um, let us, with this in mind, let us consider Deuteronomy 16, 16. It says, three times in a year shall all the males appear before Yahuwah thy Elohim in the place which he shall choose, in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, in the Feast of Weeks, and in the Feast of Tabernacles, and they shall not appear before Yahuwah empty. In Yochanan 2, 13, we have an example of Yahushua actually keeping Pesach and Unleavened Bread. It says, and the Yahudim, um, and the Yahudim's Passover, was at hand and Yahushua went up to Jerusalem. So that was for the Feast of, uh, of Pesach or the Feast of Unleavened Bread. You know, so he went up to that, to that, to that feast. Later in Yochanan 5.1, it tells us after, after this, after he went to Passover, there was a feast of the Yahudim. Yahushua went up to Jerusalem. And the feast that comes after Pesach is Shavuot, which is actually tomorrow. You know, so, you know, uh, and we see Yahushua going up to that. And then in Yochanan 7, verse 2, it says, Now the Yahudim's Feast of Tabernacles was at hand. And 
and if we jump down to verse 8 of Yochanan 7, it says, Go ye up unto the feast. This is Yahushua speaking to his brethren. He says, Go ye up unto the feast. I go not up yet unto the feast, for my time is not yet full come. And then if we jump down to verse 10, it says, But when his brethren were gone up, then when he also up unto the feast, not openly, but as it were in secret. So we see Yahushua did, in fact, keep Torah. He did, in fact, you know, go before Yahuwah during the feast times of Israel. And if we're going to follow him, then we would have to do likewise. So hereby we see that he truly did keep the feast of Israel, you know, and so let's just follow him in doing so. We have Matthew Yahoo 3, 13 through 15. It says, uh, then come of Yahushua from Galilee to Jordan unto Yochanan to be baptized of him. But Yochanan forbade him and saying, I have need to be baptized of thee and ye comest to me. And Yahushua answering said unto him, suffer it to be, suffer it to be so now for thus it become of us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. Okay. So point being, if, Yahushua uh, went to be baptized, and he was baptized. And if we're going to follow him, then we're going to be baptized too. You know, now, uh, just on a spiritual note, you know, it, it speaks of Yahushua going from Galilee to the Jordan unto Yochanan to be baptized of him. And the Jordan, Jordan speaks to a descender. Jordan means a descender. And Yochanan means a gift of Elohim. And we know that the gift of Elohim that descended from Elohim is the Ruach HaKodesh, um, even the spirit of truth, you know, and, you know, and so this is a, this is a spiritual message within a physical message of, of Yahushua going to be baptized in the Ruach HaKodesh, the spirit of truth, you know, and we see when he was baptized that the spirit did come upon him, you know, uh, as in the form of a dove. You know, so I just figured out, I'll point that out because a lot of the things that Yahushua physically done in following him, um, you know, he was doing them physically as well as spiritually. And then following him, we're going to have to do them, uh, do likewise, you know, so it, it uh, does as well if we understand the spiritual aspect of things, you know, and this is to be, this is, was done to fulfill our righteousness. And so even as our Messiah, whom we are to be following, sought to fulfill our righteousness then in following him we're to seek to fulfill our righteousness and do likewise all right matthew Yahoo 4 1 and 2 says then was yahushua led up of the ruach into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights he was afterward and hungered and so what i want you to see is that you know yahushua Follow the Ruach into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And if we're going to follow him, if we're going to follow in his footsteps, then that means we're going to have to allow the Ruach to lead us into a wilderness too, even if it's just a spiritual wilderness, which is um, a wilderness even amongst people, you know, to be tempted of the devil. You know, and so our wilderness is a spiritual wilderness amongst people, and we're led there to be tempted of the devil so the the devil will use the people that are around us to tempt us i pray you can see this you know and um matthew yahoo 4 2 said and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights he was after a hunger you know so we in following yahushua we too are to be led of the ruach into a wilderness experience matthew yahoo 4 23 tells us um you know where yahushua went Afterwards, it says, and Yahushua went about all Galilee, which speaks to a circuit, which, which can speak to Yahshmoedim. Um, and it says, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases among the people. Again, saints, if we're going to follow Yahushua, then we're going to be walk, uh, walking about Galilee, that is, um, which speaks to the circuit, which speaks to the Moedim you know, that we're to go around and around year by year and serving God. And we're to be teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. This is what uh, our responsibility becomes 
in following Yahushua, if we're going to do as he did, then, you know, we're going to have to preach the gospel of the kingdom as well, you know, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people, you know, and, and so we're going to, um, if we're going to follow him, we're going to be preaching the gospel of the kingdom and praying for the sick and diseased among the people. Matthew Yahoo 9.35, and Yahushua went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. So again, if we're going to follow Yahushua, if we're going to really truly follow him and go in his footsteps, then we're going to find ourselves, we're going to find ourselves, you know, being in, in cities and villages and teaching in, in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and disease among the people you know so i want i want uh, everyone to, to to see that you know if we're going to follow yahshua then we have to go where he went and do as he did you know let me have my next reader read matthew yahoo 12 9 through 13 um Sister Jasmine, could you read Matthew Yahoo 12, 9 through 13, please? And when he was departed thence, he went into their synagogue. And behold, there was a man which had his hand withered. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days, that they might accuse him? And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep? And if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold of it and lift it out? How much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. Then saith he to the man, stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it forth and it was restored whole like as the other. Hallelujah. And so hereby we learn that it's okay to do well on the Sabbath. You know, um, there's, you know, there's a lot of people who jump out of the frying pan of Christianity into the skillet of Judaism, you know, and, you know, Judaism is all about the letter of the law, you know, and the letter killer. You know, it's, it's, it's okay to do well on the Sabbath. You know, what is, what is to do well? To do well is to do good. And there's nothing good but Elohim. So if you're doing something that's uh, of Elohim, you know, then it's safe to do on the Sabbath. You know, and and this is what Yahshua was trying to show forth. You know, he was healing a man on the Sabbath. That's a good thing. That's something that you can only do if Yah is with you. You know, and if Yah is not with you, you're not going to be able to do it. And if he is with you and he allows you to do it, then you're doing his will, which is what the Sabbath is all about. It's all about him. You know, so if we're following Yahushua, it is lawful for us to also do well on the, on the Shabbat, you know. Uh, Sister Jasmine, could you um, could you read verses uh, twelve through fourteen of Matthew Yahoo twenty one as well, please? Sure. And Yahushua went into the temple of Elohim and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple, and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves, and said unto them, It is written. My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. Hallelujah. Okay, so here it is. Yahushua went into the temples of Elohim, you know, and cast out all them that, that sold and brought in the temple. So we too, in following our Messiah, Yahushua, are to go into the temples of Elohim and forbid them to buy and sell, you know, in the temples, you know. Now, we are to use wisdom in doing so, you know, you don't go in there and start flipping over your tables, you know. Um, 
spiritually speaking, you know, you go in there and you make certain that they understand that what they're doing is wrong, you know, and you can even show them scripture, you know, and the essence of what's being, what's being brought, brought across is that we find it in verse 13 and it's that, that they have made, made uh, his house a den of thieves, you know, and so this, this implies that they wasn't just buying and selling. They were, they were doing so unscrupulous, unscrupulously, you know, um, meaning that they were cheating people, you know, uh, you know, concerning the, uh, the, the price and weights of what they were offering. And hence that would have been a type of thievery. And hence he's saying, ye have made it a den of thieves instead of a house of prayer. You know, and it speaks of the blind and the lame coming to him in the temple and he healed them. If we're to walk in his footsteps, then we, we have to also heal the blind and the lame. And we heal the blind, you know, by being a light unto them and helping them see out of the darkness in which they're in. You know, and we heal the lame by showing them how they walk is is messed up you know how they walk is messed up and how how they they need to get back in what they need to do in order to get back in the way and walk properly you know and in doing so we will spiritually be healing the blind and the lame you know mark 1 40 through 42 says and there came a leper to him beseeching him and kneeling down to him and saying to him if thou wilt thou canst make me clean and Yahushua moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him and saith unto him, I will be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him and he was cleansed. You know, so if we look at this word touched, we, we see that it's haptomai, meaning to attach oneself to. It's from hapto, hapto. Um, number 681, meaning to set on fire. Hallelujah. I love that. Um, so if we're to follow Yahushua in cleansing the unclean, we do so by attaching ourselves to them with the intent of setting them on fire. So, you know, if we see someone who's unclean and they want to be cleansed, you know, we attach ourselves to them. We make them our pet project, you know, and we, we um, get them on fire for Yah, you know, we set them on fire for Yah, you know, where they're um, zealous to do his will, way, and purposes, and in doing so, we will be helping to cleanse them and healing them of their spiritual leprosy, you know, and then we have Yochanan 619, which says, so when they had rolled about five and 20 or 30 furlongs, they see um, Yahushua walking on the sea, and drawing nigh unto the ship, and they were afraid. When we realize that the waters of the world spiritually speak to the peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues, um, which is uh, uh, we learn from Revelation 17, 15, we should also realize that we can even follow Yahushua and walking on the sea. We can walk on the peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. We can walk right over them with, Yah with Yahushua, you know, and they will be under our feet, you know, if we continue to walk in the way of Elohim with Yahushua, our Messiah. You know, then we have Yochanan 18, 1 and 2, it says, when Yahushua has spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Kidron, uh, where was a garden into which he entered and his disciples, and, Yah and Yahudas or Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Yahushua oftentimes resorted there with his disciples. And saints, we too are going to have to oftentimes cross over the, um, the Black Torrent Kedron to get to Gethsemane. This was, the, this was the garden that's being spoken of. And Geth Gethsemane mean, speak, means an oil press. You know, so we'll have to cross over the Black Torrent Kedron to get oil for our lamps. Now you have to understand that um, it's caused the brook, it calls it the brook Kedron, but it wasn't actually a brook. 
it was actually a torrent. And a torrent is a very violent, you know, um, a very violent uh, rush of, of water. You know, so it was it was very a very dangerous crossing, in other words, you know. And so the spiritual picture that's being presented here is that when you get on the other side of trouble, when you get on the other side of, you know, of violence and trouble, you know, that's where the garden is. That's where the oil press is. That's where you how you get oil for your lamps. You know, and of course, the oil speaks to, you know, how you shed light, you know. Now, uh, to exemplify what I'm talking about, let's take a look at Second Corinthians 1, 3 through 7. Brother Kurt, could you have you read Second uh, Corinthians 1, 3 through 7, please? Sure. Blessed be Elohim, even the father of our Adonai, Yahushua HaMashiach the Father of mercies and the Elohim of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in trouble, any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of Elohim. For as the sufferings of Mashiach abound in us, so our consolation also abounds by Mashiach. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings, which we also suffer. For whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that ye as partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye also be of the consolation. Hallelujah. Okay, so I want you to get what's being said here. You know, in verse 4 it says, Who come of, oh, comfort us, in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. You know, so, you know, he's telling us that the Father and the Son comforts them, you know, in their tribulation, that they may be able to comfort others when they're in trouble. He says, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of Elohim. So in other words, when you go through something, when you cross over that, excuse me, that black torrent, when you talk cross over times of trouble and get to the other side, the lessons that you learned from crossing over that, uh, that, that, that trouble is the very things that you utilize to comfort others who have to, um, who have to em embark upon similar trouble, you know, and so he says, and whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation. So whenever we're afflicted, it's for the consolation and salvation of someone else. You know, so we're going to go through some stuff, but on in going through some stuff and in crossing over that black torrent kedron and crossing over all this trouble and suffering, you know, it's going to prepare us to help those who come behind us. You know, so we're going to take the consolation in which we receive and the enlightenment in which we receive and going through the tests and trials that we endure to help console others who are going through something similar. And so this is why the, uh, the apostle says, you know, it is for your consolation and salvation. And he continues and says, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings, which we also suffer or rather we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. You know, so we went through this through this stuff so that when you go through it, we know how to um, comfort and console you, even as um, the Father and the Son comforted and consoled us. You know, and he said, and our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, ye shall also, um, all, ye shall also be of the consolation. So we know if you follow us as we follow Yahushua, then you're going to come into some sufferings as well. And when you come into those sufferings, we're praying that the consolations that we receive will console you as well. See, and that's the, how, how this thing go. And then when you receive those consolations, those who come behind you and endure similar sufferings, uh, sufferings you then, you know, give them the consolation that you, that you receive and you console them and so on and so forth, you know, with everyone that follows Yahushua. Because if you follow Yahushua, you're going to oftentimes have to 
go to Gethsemane, that is to get oil for your lamps. You're going to have to go over the Black Torrent Kedron. You're going to have to go over very troublesome times, a very troublesome path, you know, a very violent path, you know, but Yah will keep you so that you can help those that's coming behind you. You know, I thought that was Yasum. So um, if we look at uh, the word Kedron, it's number 2748, and it speaks to a black winter torn, you know, and, and that's, that's revelatory too, because, you know, in the summertime, you know, it's not even a, it's not even a brook or, or a river in that area. It becomes the um, Valley of Jehoshaphat, you know, so it becomes a valley. It's just, it's, it's all dried up. You know, but in the winter time, it becomes a torrent. It becomes this this great rushing of water that is very very dangerous. Hence, let your uh, hence Yahushua would, would say, you know, let your flight not be on the Sabbath or in the winter. Selah. All right. So, uh, let me have my next reader, Sister Kim. Could I get you to read? Yoke 9, 18, 12 through 14, please. Okay. Then the band and the captain of the officers of the Yehudim took Yahushua and bound him and led him away to Annas first, for he was the father-in-law to Caiaphas, which was the high priest that same year. Now Caiaphas was he which gave counsel to the Yehudim, that is, was expedient that one man should die for all people, or for the people. All right, so um, in, in following behind Yahushua and seeing what he did when he was upon the earth, we get to, we get to, uh, and where the places that he went, you know, we get to him being bound and led away to Annas first. And so Annas means humble, i.e. rendered, uh, rendered me you know, i.e. non-assertive and submissive, penitent, that is regretful, uh, regretful pain or sorrow for offenses. So, you know, what scripture is teaching us, you know, spiritually um, with him being led to Annas is, you know, first and foremost, you're going to be bound and following Yahushua, there's going to come to a time when you're going to be bound and you're going to be led away to Anna. When you led away to Annas, you know, you're going to be humbled. You know, or they're going to seek to humble you. They're going to seek to render you meek, to make you non-assertive about the things of Elohim, to make you submissive to the things of man, to try to get you to be penitent. That is, um, try to have you to, to, to receive regretful pain or sorrow for offenses, you know, to, to their way of doing things. You know, when they when they're contrary wise to Yah's way of doing things. You know, such as, you know, if they decide to make it mandatory that everyone takes a certain vaccination, you know, that they're working on. You know, that would be offensive to them, you know, but it would be within the will of Yah for us not to do so. So which one are we to follow? Commandments of men or the commandments of Yah? Selah. You know, so you see, if anyone truly follows Yahushua, they will find themselves bound, you know, at um at some point and led to Annas. It's, it says Annas first. So it's always going to be, you know, Annas first. So that you're always going to go to a to a uh it's going to be a point in which the enemy is going to try to humble you, render you meek and non-assertive, you know, make you submissive uh, and, and penitent, you know, but then, you know, Yahshua, then his journey doesn't end there, you know, his journey continues. And so if it continues, then we're to continue to follow him. So let's see what happens next. Sister Kim, could I also have you read Yochanan 18, 19 through 23? Okay. The high priest then asked Yahushua of his disciples and of his doctrine. Yahushua answered him, I spake openly to the world. I ever taught, I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whether the Yehudim always resort, and, and in secret have I said nothing. 
Why askest thou me? Ask them which they heard, what I have said unto them. Behold, they ask what I said. And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Yahushua on, with the palm of his hand, saying, Answereth thou the high priest so? And Yahushua answered him, If I have, if I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why smiteth thou me? All right. So in other words, he smote him for nothing. You know, now I want you to pay particular attention to verse 19. Because it says the high priest then asked of Yahushua, asked Yahushua of his disciples and of his doctrine. Okay. And okay, when 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 they when they send you from uh when Anna's get done with you, you know, at some point. You know, you may come to him one too many times. He's going to eventually send you to uh, to the next stop, if if you would. You know. Oh, he hasn't got there yet. He's still with with Annas. So, and this is how Annas, you know, was trying to render him, you know, uh, humble him, and it's telling us. It says that he asked him of his disciples and of his doctrine. And so this is important to note because, you know, if they bound you, they're, they're going to ask you of, of the disciples and of, of the doctrine as well. And so you have to understand that Yahushua's disciples, you know, um, he also referred to him as his brethren, you know, as his family, you know, and, and I want you to think about those enemies would be those of your very own household, you know, uh, there's going to be some that's going to be bound and they're going to tell on their brand and they're going to talk about their doctrines, you know, and, you know, they're going to, you know, cause a bunch of trouble, you know, for the saints. You have to know this ahead of time, you know, that this is a very real possibility, you know, and so just imagine, you know, yourself in a scenario where, you know, you're trusting in the, in, in this group of people and you, they, they become your family and, you know, or rather it's your, it is your, your actual um, physical family, you know, it works both ways, you know, and here it is, they're bound and they start asking about the disciples and asking about the doctrines, you know, some people are going to hold strong and other people aren't, aren't just simple as that, you know, and so, it's not hard to see, you know, the other things that Yahshua say will happen, such as, you know, uh, people turning on each other, you know, family turning on one another. Now, Yochanan 18, 24 says, and Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. You know, now Caiaphas, you know, is the guy who wanted him dead from the beginning. You know, Caiaphas means fully depressed. You know, so Annas sought to humble them. It speaks to, to, to their humbling. But Caiaphas, you know, speaks to them becoming fully depressed, i.e. to press down to a lower state or position, to impoverish, to make sad, to limit or diminish, to let fall or bring down, to cause someone to feel unhappy and without hope. This is what they are going to do to you, even as they did it unto Yahushua. If we follow in his footsteps, the same thing is going to happen. It's built right into the walk. You know, if you do the walk, you know, in the way that scripture suggests, it's going to come to pass, you know. And so Caiaphas speaks to a place where, you know, they're going to try to fully depress you. They're going to try to leave you not only unhappy, but without hope. You know, so even as Yahushua <clears throat> went to Annas and <clears throat> Caiaphas, you know, if we truly follow Yahushua, you know, then so must we. We're going to have to go through these same channels, you know. And even though it won't be literal, Anderson, um, Caiaphas, we'll go through a spiritual representation that would be just as real to us. You know, in Yochanan 18, 28 and 29, it says, Then led they Yahushua from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment, you know, unto the hall of judgment, and it was early, and they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled but that they might eat the Passover. Pilate then went out unto them and said, what accusation bring ye against this man? If we jump down to verses 33 and 34, 
we, we see with that. Well, as it says, then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Yahushua and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Yahudim? Yahushua answered him, um, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Okay, now I want you to understand that Pilate, his name means armed with a spear. So spiritually speaking, this speaks of if we're going to follow Yahushua, we're eventually going to find ourselves, you know, before someone that's armed with a spear. And we know what spears can do. Amen. All right. So if we continue on uh, in this journey, verse 36 and 37 of Yochanan 18, Yahushua answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Yahudim, but now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Yahushua answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause I came into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. You know, and so it's important that we see that what Yahushua was being charged with is him being king. And he's even stating here in verse 36 that his kingdom is not of this world. You know, and so this would be the same thing the true disciples of Yahushua, those who truly follow in his footsteps, will be accused of. They'll be accused of Yahushua being their king. And they'll be accused of, you know, um, and they'll be stating that their kingdom is not of this world, even as Yahushua's kingdom was not of this world. And they'll be accused of, and they'll be doing just what Yahushua did, because they'll be walking in his footsteps. So they'll be saying this very same thing. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. You know, and we're sanctified by that truth. Yahuwah's word is truth. You know, and so, Yochanan 19, 1 through 7, it says, Then Pilate therefore took Yahushua and scourged him. And the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on, a, put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, king of the Yahudim. And they smote him with their hands. Yes, if we follow Yahushua, yes, it's a very good chance we're going to get scourged. It's a very good chance that they're going to, they're going to uh, make fun of us and play games with us, you know, and smite us with their hands. Verse 4, Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Then came Yahushua forth wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man. When the chief priest, therefore, and the officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. And the Yahudim answered, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the son of Elohim. And you have to know and understand that, you know, according to scripture, we recognize ourselves as the children of Elohim. Hence, we call the Heavenly Father, Father. Amen? You know, and so if they were willing to crucify the Messiah, saying that he made himself the son of Elohim, how much more so would they be willing to crucify us? Yochanan 19, 12 through 14. And from henceforth, Pilate sought to release him. But the Yahudim cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king, a speaketh against Caesar. Then Pilate therefore heard that saying. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Yahushua forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement. But in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover, about the sixth hour. And he saith unto the Yahudim, Behold your king. And so what we have to see from this part of Yahushua's journey is that there's going to be times, you know, when we're going to be brought into um, Gabbatha or the, the pavement, which speaks to, which speaks to kind of like um, the equivalent in our day's time would be the courtroom. 
you know, and it's going to be times in which, you know, they're going to want to let us go. But their hands are going to be tied by the, the legal system that they, that they uh, work for and that they serve, by the world that they serve. You know, and if we go to Yokanai 1917, you know, um, we find it says, and he bearing his cross went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha, which means a skull, you know. And so, you know, you know, after he passes judgment on him that he is to be crucified, you know, at the pavement, then he begins to, uh, he has to bear his cross and go to the place of the skull, which of course skull, skull represent death. And then we have verses 19 and 20 says, and Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was Yahushua of Nazareth, the king of the Yahudim. This title then read many other Yahudim for the place where Yahushua was crucified was nigh to the city. And it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. In other words, all the main languages of the world of, of that time, you know, it was written in, you know, so that everyone would know that this man was being charged with and killed or crucified for being the king for uh, being the king of the Yahudim. So if we're to truly follow Yahushua, we too must be brought before the pavement. I, you know, um, for example, the courtroom to bear witness unto the truth. Take note that this is where Yahushua received his cross. Say la, say la, say la. You know, this is where he received his cross when it says, you know, pick up your cross and follow me. You know, additionally, take note of the charges that Yahushua was crucified for. That is for being the king of the Yahudim. See, because when you truly understand what it means when Yahushua said you can't serve two masters for you will love the one and hate the other. And you truly choose Yahushua to be your king. You know, then you'll find yourself, you know, in a type of quandary, you know, and you will become the enemy. If you choose Yahushua, you'll become the enemy of the world because you can't be friends with the world and with in the kingdom of Elohim um, at the same time. You know, they're contrary to one another. So, that's all I have for you today. I pray it was a blessing. Give a record, Yahuwah by Yishmareka, Yahuwah Panai, Be Leka, Be Hikaneka, Yisa, Yahuwah Panai, Be Leka, Lasaim, Lasaim, Laka Shalom. May Yahuwah bless thee and keep thee. May Yahuwah lift up his face upon thee and be gracious unto thee. May Yahuwah lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And may he put his name upon you and may you all be blessed. Hallelujah.